I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R440 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on drives, both hard drives and solid state drives. Let's get going! Well hey, thanks for stopping by today. I just want a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R440 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video is specifically focused on drives. We're going to go over uh, the different types of compatible drives. We're going to go over the speeds for those drives, the max sizes for those drives. Then we're going to actually show you how to install them, which is really easy because they're a hot swap. So we're just going to pop in and out, but we're going to show you nonetheless how to do it. Then we're going to show you how to test with Dell Diagnostics and test with a tool we like called HD Sentinel, which will show you the power on hours and the health score of your drive. It's just a great secondary tool outside of Dell Diagnostics. So between the two of them, you can make sure you have a good, healthy drive that you're working with. So, all right, well, let's hop in. What are the types of compatible drives with the PowerEdge R440? Well, for the hard drives, you have SAS and you have SATA, and then you also have solid state drives. And with solid state drives, you have SAS and SATA within there, okay? So let's go ahead and break down the speed. So with SAS drives, you can have a 7.2K. 10K or 15K, and generally speaking, your uh, uh, your 7.2K is going to be the uh, the rounder sizes, your one terabyte, your two terabytes sizes like that. Whereas your uh, 10K, 15K are going to be some of the kind of oddball sizes, your 300 gig, your 600 gig, your 1.2 terabyte. Uh, those SAS drives are generally your faster speeds, the 10 and 15K. And it's also worth noting for SAS drives when you are running with 10 and 15K that the uh, ball bearings will wear out. Uh, they're spinning so fast; it's a mechanical device. Uh, they are known to fail, which is one of the reasons. I am a big, big fan of solid state drives as a whole. Uh, now with SATA drives, really you're going to get 7.2K. Uh, there's some kind of weird ones out there like the, uh, the old Raptor drives will get you 10K, uh, but realistically you're going to get 7.2K uh, as your speed for SATA. That's, that's what you're going to get. Uh, now for solid state drives, you can get uh, 3 gigabit per second, 6 gigabit per second, or 12 gigabit per second, but there's some keys there. Really the max that you can get is 6 for SATA solid state drives and 12 for SAS solid state drives. So that's a, a good key to point out, one of the advantages of uh, SAS solid state drives as a whole. Uh, now let's talk about the different sizes that you can use, or some of the max sizes, I should say. Well, really, that depends on the form factor of your R440 server. So right here, I have the large form factor one. Uh, when we do our different chassis video, we'll show you the three different chassis. There's uh, an eight base small form factor and a 10 base small form factor. When you go to our uh, website, and if you're trying to uh, order uh, upgrades for your machine, and you're trying to get some SSDs, uh, you'll you'll see all the options in there to make sure that you get the right caddy. So if you need the 2.5 inch for the uh, the 8 bay or the 10 bay, or if you need the 3.5 inch for the 4 bay, uh, we'll have those options. And one of the things that I always think is really cool is that uh, we have this uh, converter here. That's uh, you know it's Dell's official converter where you get. Um, the adapter for a 3.5 inch and you can still put your 2.5 inch solid state drive to pop them in there. So I always thought that was pretty cool and you can get that on our side as well. So um, all right now the uh, the sizes for a uh, small form factor we'll start there uh, is going to be 2.4 2.4 terabytes for SAS, 2 terabytes for SATA and 7.68 terabytes for solid state drives. So with the small form factor uh, uh, chassis, there's definitely a big advantage of the solid state drives just uh, because you can get a higher scalability and they're faster and better performing and less likely to die on you. So a lot of advantages for the solid state drives for those two chassis in particular. Now with the large form factor drive, uh, you can get uh, sizes of eight ter or 18 terabytes for SAS, 16 terabytes for SATA, and then again you use this converter right here and you can still get a 7.68 terabyte drive in for your solid state drives. And again, that's the advantage of a, a four bay large form factor is that you can pop in a bunch of uh, large form factor drives that are big storages, you know, your 18 terabyte drives. And realistically, it, I'm sure you could probably put in here 20 or 22 terabytes. We haven't actually put them in. This is just some of the official numbers that are out there right now. Um, and if you have used the 18 or you have used a 20 or 22 terabyte at home, do us a favor, drop a comment down below for everyone to know. Um, but those are um, uh, just great machines for that because again, you can put in a bunch of storage for really cheap compared to the uh, the small form factors just cost a lot more. So, all right, uh, now that I have rambled on enough about the uh, the sizes and uh, all the, the speeds and all that good stuff, let's actually show you how to install them and then show you how to test them. All one, so uh, it's really simple as a whole. Uh, so we're gonna install the, uh, the converter with the um, uh, solid state drive that we had mentioned. So you literally just are gonna line this up right here and then you're just gonna push this in and when it gets to the point where um, the top of this catches the edge over here, so right here, it'll actually start to close by itself and you close it and it'll lock into place. If you want to remove it, 
you just push this and pull it back out so it's a very very simple install as a whole and again I am a big fan of upgrading your machines with SSDs uh, it is just going to be a huge boost in performance uh, it's one of the the best ways to increase the life of a server like an R440 which is a, a Haas machine that's a uh, 14th gen and a 16th gen that just came out right now it's going to cost a ton of money so you can definitely uh, upgrade your 440 pop in some SSDs and extend the life for several more years so well now we're going to show you how to test with Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel Hey guys, this has been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to test your hard drives and solid state drives with Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. Both Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel are great tools for not just testing your hard drives, but for testing all of the other components in your system. Specifically, Dell Diagnostics will test more than just your hard drives. It'll go ahead and test your graphics card, your CPU, your memory, um, your RAID card, your network card, um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so it's a really neat tool that allows you to be able to see whether your system is in good health or not. And then HD Sentinel in, uh, in particular will just test your hard drives but you can see things like the power on hours um, it'll give you like a health score to tell you like how much life the drive still has so it is a really cool tool both of them are, are very easy to use provide a lot of information and in this video I'm going to show you how to use both of them so let's go ahead and get started first we're going to go ahead and get started with Dell Diagnostics so the first thing you want to do is go ahead and boot up your server. Once you boot up your server, you want to go ahead and press F10. Um, and this will go ahead and bring us into the lifecycle controller. Once we're in lifecycle controller, we can go ahead and scroll down to where it says hardware diagnostics. And then we want to go ahead and click on run hardware diagnostics. And then you'll get this little warning right here. So it's just going to say it's going to take several minutes. So we can go ahead and accept that. Um, and this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So actually getting into Dell Diagnostics and actually running the test is pretty simple. So we're just going to let these tests run. And these tests can say, take several minutes up to several hours. So go ahead and just wait this out. If you're familiar with 12th gen and 13th gen uh, Dell PowerEdge servers, um, you'll notice that this looks very, very different. In the 12th gen and 13th gen, you can actually see the different tests on the left-hand side of the screen, um, and you have a lot more information on the middle of the screen. Um, and it's just a lot more simpler of a screen, but it's just gonna go ahead and run through all of these tests. Um, and at the bottom, you can kind of, you can pause these tests if you want, um, and then you can also see like what test specifically is running at that current time, an estimate of how much time is left for that test. So like I said, these tests are gonna take a little bit of time, so I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward So once that final test has stopped running, it'll go ahead and stop. And then we will get a message that pops up on the screen that says success. So this means all of our tests have passed. Um, if you had any issues, then you would get an alternative message saying like, hey, these, these tests failed. Um, and at the very end here, we can actually view all of the information and all the different tests that were ran. Um, and this screen's a little bit more similar as to something we'd see on 12th gen and 13th gen PowerEdge servers. But yeah, we can go through here, see all the test results for each individual test, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, the information about the system health, the configuration, um, and we can even go into the event log, which is pretty useful. So that is how we do uh, Dell Diagnostics and how we can test our hard drives, but also, you know, everything else in our system. And if you really want to see if your system is healthy, then go ahead and run Dell Diagnostics. It'll give you a lot of information if all the components are working the way that they should. So now I'm going to show you how to test your hard drives with HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now and as you can see we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours. 
which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%, so all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.